Welcome to the video where we're going to be discussing the difference between polycystic ovaries and polycystic ovarian syndrome because although they look the same, they sound the same, they are completely different things and it's important to know that because as we'll see in this video, polycystic ovaries doesn't require really any intervention where polycystic ovarian syndrome is a far more complex condition that has far more symptoms that does require you to take action towards it. So first things first is what we're talking about polycystic ovaries. If we look here, this is my attempt at an ultrasound. But you see this general um, string of pearls here. These are polycystic ovaries. These are all the cysts, which aren't actually cysts. They, these are just follicles around the periphery of your ovary. So it's important to know, before getting into this, I'll just quickly explain this. Although it's polycystic in both, they aren't actual cysts. They are just unmatured follicles. So PCO and PCOS are not ovarian cysts. That is a completely, once again, different diagnosis. Ovarian cysts are different to polycystic ovaries and polycystic ovarian syndrome. So if we look here at PCO, around 33% of females at any given time will have polycystic ovaries. Now, notice there I said any given time, and that is because of the ever-changing nature of your ovaries. You might go in to have an ultrasound today and they will find polycystic ovaries, but that doesn't mean next week, in two weeks, in a month's time, you will have polycystic ovaries. Remember, they are just unmatured follicles. So when those follicles are reabsorbed into your ovaries, which happens every 100 days, that's the life cycle of, of a follicle, your ovaries may look completely different. So being diagnosed with PCO is not a lifetime diagnosis. You may not have polycystic ovaries next month. And that is because your ovaries are ever changing. So 33% of women at any given time. And polycystic ovaries are just a normal variant of healthy ovaries. Remember, if your menstrual cycle is regular, your follicles are always maturing, getting reabsorbed, maturing, getting reabsorbed. So it's just a normal variant of healthy ovaries. And generally speaking, there are no symptoms because it's discovered by accident. So you may be going in to get an ultrasound for some sort of reason and they may discover polycystic ovaries because there's no symptoms attached to it. So you're not going to know that those follicles are there in an unmatured state. Where if we look here at polycystic ovarian syndrome, so rough estimates around 10% of all females will have polycystic ovary syndrome. We know it's lifelong, but I spent... I spoke last week on a video talking about how you can be undiagnosed with PCOS and that's very important too because you always hear that there's no cure for PCOS, it's a lifelong thing, it's always going to be a battle and look, I'm not taking anything away from that because it is a daily battle but just realize that poly, being diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome is generally going to be done by a symptoms and blood test. So if through the actions you're taking to improve your PCOS, you correct those blood tests which therefore improve your symptoms, you can be undiagnosed with PCOS. So although it's lifelong, and you will still have to take those actions that you took to overcome PCOS, you can be undiagnosed with PCOS. That doesn't mean it's gone forever, of course. So unlike PCO, which is just a normal variant of healthy ovaries, PCOS is a complex metabolic and hormonal condition. We're looking at hormones like androgens, insulin, estrogen, progesterone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, maybe thyroid hormone. All of these hormones that could be out of balance driving your PCOS symptoms. And there are a wide range of PCOS symptoms. I've spoken about this often. We're talking about weight gain, fertility issues, menstrual cycle irregularities, acne, hair loss on the scalp, hair growth, face, chest, arms, poor sleep, low energy, low libido. Many, many symptoms that can be attached to PCOS. So you can see now that they are completely different from one another. And you'll usually find it where a woman, maybe in her teens, maybe in her 20s, maybe in her 30s, maybe coming off after birth control, will present with symptoms because she's experiencing these symptoms and she doesn't know what's going on. So as you can see here, although they sound the same and look the same, they are completely different. You may have polycystic ovaries and have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Tricky thing is, 
you may have polycystic ovarian syndrome and you may not have polycystic ovaries. Although it's one of the three diagnosing criteria, if you're using the Rotterdam criteria, still means if you only need two out of the three diagnosing criteria to be diagnosed with PCOS, you may not have polycystic ovaries. And as I said before about the ever-changing nature of your ovaries, you may have PCOS and PCO, but it doesn't mean in a month's time or two months time or three months time, you will still have polycystic ovaries, especially if you're taking the right actions towards improving your symptoms. So I just wanted to make this video because I see a lot of confusion about this and I really wanna cut all that confusion out so you get completely clear about what may be going on in your body. So if you have any questions about this video at all, please let me know in the comment section or if you wanna keep it private, send me a DM. Uh, and as always, I'll see you on the next video.